today we are out at our answer acre plot on the bean side. So we've talked at this plot all season at this precision on the precision side. This is part of a long-term uh, population study that we've done here at Northern Country Co-op. Uh, in the past, we have done uh, long, narrow uh, trials of different populations out here. And this year, we've uh, spiced it up a little bit. We're doing smaller blocks across the field in random. Um, we do this on the corn side and the bean side out here. But I like doing the bean one because we talk about different range or a big range of populations. We go all the way down to 75,000, which is extremely, extremely low for uh, soybeans up in the upper Midwest, to 175, which is well above what we normally put out there. Um, generally speaking, a lot of the beans in this part of the country go in at about between 140 and 150,000 seeds per acre. And the reason why we do that is we want to make sure that we have ample uh, final stand at the end. Uh, most of the universities nowadays are saying between 100 and 110,000 for a final stand. Depending on disease and depending on planting conditions, we may need um, 150,000 at times. But with better seed technology and better treatments to keep uh, some of those early season diseases out of the picture, we can get by with a heck of a lot less. So. This is uh, just some of the examples of what we have out here for the different populations. So we have on our left here, uh, your left, not my left, uh, the 75,000 seeds per acre, the 90,000 seeds per acre, the 120,000 seeds per acre, 150, and 175. And like I've said in the past, these are all randomized across this field and and it allows us to do that, or the reason why we want to do that is to make sure that we're not getting um, some bias towards certain soil types. We're getting most of these trials across all the soil types that are across this field, so I feel really good about what we're seeing out here. So you can see th these are actually uh, NK20 J5Xs. There are two zero bean on, on the NK side, um, a pretty high yielding bean with a pretty good disease package when it comes to white mold. Uh, sudden death, it's, it's okay, but there is some sudden death out here. And the reason why I wanted to go with that one is because of all these different populations we're going out here. So this is not any different soybean, or different soybeans at each of these populations. This is just one soybean across the whole thing. So you can see the 75,000 definitely branches out just tremendously. You see a lot of beans on these side branches and stuff. And what it's trying to do is trying to take every little bit of light uh, that plant or that uh, row has. So it's spreading its wings, it's getting out and about, and it's probably not as tall as the rest of them. Because of that, it's branching out. It's, it's a little shorter and a little squattier. Um, <clears throat> as we, but as we kind of go along, we do see a little bit of a change on how things look. We, we uh, have some uh, a little bit less branching on this one, a little less branching on this one. We get over to the 175,000, that thing is just a straight pin. You can also see that the ones on the left also have a lot more pods per plant, but obviously we need the, all the pods per plant that we have out here because we don't have as many plants. So um, if we look at maybe a dollars and cents side of things. This is actually a pretty great way to do it. We're not, it doesn't look like we're giving up really anything for yield out here at this moment, but <clears throat> we'll see how things go. Yesterday I was out here and I, I did do some pod counts. It was anywhere from 50 to 60 bushels per acre across most of the checks out here. Um, I didn't make that official because I don't know what the next couple weeks are going to give us. These beans are probably getting close to R6, but we are in the grips of a pretty dry stretch right now. There's a lot of twos, a lot of blanks that were should have been threes. So we'll see how this thing looks at the end of the year. So just a quick little summary. The 75 and the 90 look like they're going to hold on to their own at this point. 
We've had some years where these have just train wrecked if we have poor conditions at the start of the season. Three out of the last four years that we've done this plot, we've had really good emergence. In fact, most of the scores on, on, the, uh, on the emergence are right in line with what they should be for a 90% germ soybean. If we have hail or, or a frost event, obviously the higher populations would hold their own. And I would say probably our range is probably here. But as we move on to try to minimize diseases like white mold, maybe we need to start deciding to pull, pull on, back on things. But we also have to take into consideration canopy at that point too. So um, looking at how these things work in a 30 inch situation, it is tremendous to see <laughs> how much this bean changes across these different populations. But uh, it is something that, you know, beans do a great job of compensating and taking care of what's missing out there. Um, you know, it is not a, a crop that is population dependent like corn is, but um, we have to be cognizant of what, what the right uh, situations are for that. So uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, give me a call on this. I can, we can walk through this plot. It, it's kind of cool to see um, the different, where, when the changes happen, because it, it is very quick on how that goes. Um, but it, it is a kind of a cool thing that we've done here in the past four years, and we plan to continue to do. Thank you for your time. You have a great day.